Right now at five, a utility company works to replace lead water pipes across Missouri. And we've got a sunny day ahead of us and temperatures a little warmer as well. We'll look at that forecast to get you out the door coming up. Plus, crews are changing the signage on the former Via Christi Hospital in Pittsburgh. Now with a new name. The four states most watched news starts now. Good morning and welcome to the KOAM Morning News. It's 5 a.m. I'm Elise Snowy. And I'm Chris Warner. It is now Wednesday, halfway through the work yes. week. Here we are. We're going to go one just you know, one day at a time. One day at a time, you know, it's a shorter work week for some of us, but you know, yeah. we're just along. But they, yeah. we're, we get we all get there eventually. Yeah. The weekend shows up regardless <laughs> of how the week goes and it's going to start to warm up mm. today. Now it's it's going to feel hot, okay. but it's going to be seasonably hot. Right. These temperatures are about where mm -hmm. we should be, but much warmer than where we have been. Let's uh, start with a look outside from our camera in downtown Pittsburgh. We're looking pretty Good so far this morning. We got mostly clear skies. We do have some patchy fog out there. We haven't seen anything too dense or too crazy on the fog tracker. No fog advisories, but just uh, do keep that in mind if you are commuting. Our camera seven and range line looking good too. And same from the Modoc camera down south, 20th and range line in Joplin. Also looking pretty good. Future track uh, for the first time in a while. It has absolutely nothing to show us other than again, we're going to be a bit warmer today, but as I mentioned, we'll be seasonably warm as to Temperatures go mid upper 80s across the region and we'll have plentiful sunshine and we'll have an east breeze at about 5 to 10 miles an hour through the afternoon into the evening. And as we mentioned yesterday too, a few more of those uh, 50 degree readings were possible and that's what we're seeing. We are at 59 in Joplin, 57 in Pittsburgh. And take a look at this temperature map. Look at the number of 50 degree readings that we have out there. So we're talking Sedan, Independence, Iola, Fort Scott, Pittsburgh, Joplin, Lamar, Carthage, Nevada, Stockton, all into the 50s. And we have some low to mid 60s out there as well. Either way, paint it though again. Not a bad start to the day. Kids get on the bus this morning. We are looking at upper 50s for most of us, but some low 60s will be out there as well. Clear skies, east breeze around 5 to 10. And as they head home this afternoon, again, a bit warmer, about 86. Sunny skies to hold on to that uh, light easterly breeze. Sunny skies through the day, the most straightforward day we've had in a while. And again, mid upper 80s out there. So we're right about where we should be. But again, it will definitely feel warmer. Uh, compared to the last couple of days. It's going to stay warm for a little bit, then it's going to get chilly for a couple of nights this week, and then it's going to get really hot again. We'll have details on that in the full forecast here in just a few more minutes. Elise. All right, thanks, Chris. Well, Mercy has officially taken ownership of the former Via Christi Hospital in Pittsburgh and has begun changing the signage at the hospital. The change comes after a months long transferring process after Mercy and Ascension entered into an agreement in February of this year. The transaction was finalized on September 1st. Mercy Hospital Pittsburgh is the third Mercy Hospital in Kansas, joining Mercy Hospital Columbus and Mercy Specialty Hospital Southeast Kansas in Galena. A ribbon cutting at Mercy Hospital Pittsburgh is set for next Wednesday, September 11th. Well, the Community Health Center of Southeast Kansas wants you to know walk in mammography screenings are now available. The screenings are available at its Fort Scott and Pittsburgh South locations and the clinics will accept walk ins Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. until 4 p.m. The clinic offers other financial assistance programs ensuring every woman who needs a mammogram screening will receive one regardless of income or insurance status. Well, several Southwest Missouri school districts have teamed up to encourage a community wide focus on strong student attendance for the upcoming year. The campaign, which kicks off this month, aims to highlight the value and benefits of attending school each day. In 2018 and 2019, just over 12% of Missouri students were chronically absent. That number almost doubled during the 2022-2023 school year. To learn more about the campaign, just go to KOAMnewsnow.com. And now you can stay up to date with the latest news, weather, and sports with the KOAM Plus TV streaming app. It's available on Amazon Fire TV, Android TV, Apple TV Plus, and Roku. 
Blair is also available on our news and weather apps as well as our website. Watch it live streaming anytime absolutely free. The KOAM Plus TV streaming app. The Miami City Council last night discussed the future of Police Chief Thomas Hightower Anderson. During last night's City Council meeting, officials discussed the Chief's position during an executive closed session. As it was not open to the public, the details of the session are not known. We reached out to the city's communication manager for comment but have not yet heard back. In July, the chief was placed on paid administrative leave following allegations of misconduct. The city has not provided details about the allegations, simply saying they were personnel matters. However, they are hired. They have rather hired an independent investigator to look into the matter. Well, Missouri American Water is working to replace lead pipes across the state, including in Joplin homes. This comes as the EPA requires all U.S. water companies to inventory their local service lines. KWM Samantha Walker has more on what Missouri residents need to know about the pipe replacement program. According to a representative with Missouri American Water, Joplin's water is perfectly safe because of how it's treated. But that isn't stopping the company from their efforts to replace lead in galvanized water lines. Joplin residents may have recently received a letter asking them to identify the material of their pipes. Essentially, we don't know what's out in Joplin in terms of how many lead service lines there are. So what we're doing is asking people, um, especially if they have homes that were built before 1970, to go to our website um, to self-report or they can schedule a time for a contractor to come out and check. We just need to build our inventory. Because the company doesn't own the pipes within residents' homes, they don't have a complete record of who has lead or galvanized pipes and who doesn't. For customers to identify they have these pipes, Missouri American Water is offering to replace the water lines, including the customer-owned portion, for free. This is something we just want our customers to know that we're doing at no direct cost to them. Lead and galvanized pipe, they stop using them for a reason, um, and it is due to, you know, possible hazards um, with that lead, you know, leaching into lines, um, in, especially in areas where they don't treat the water such as we do. It's nationwide, and it's just better to replace that line. Um, also, if it is a lead or galvanized line, it's probably quite old and subject to breaking. She says the company is trying to get an inventory of how many homes need a lead pipe replacement by October. This would allow them to know how much work needs to be done and how they can help those homes in a timely fashion. It's um, something that in the long run could really benefit them. It gives us a chance to, I think, um, maybe give some customers additional peace of mind, maybe add, you know, resale value to their home if the service line has been replaced and updated. And it's just something that we take great pride in. Reporting in Joplin, Samantha Walker, KOAM News. Now, if you're not sure if you have lead pipes, but believe it's a possibility, you can request for a contractor to look through the Missouri American Water website. They'll check the material of your pipes at no cost to you. And that's a look at this morning's top stories and weather in our first seven minutes coming up on the KOAM Morning News. McDonald County softball tries to spoil Carl Junction's home opener. We'll have the details. Plus, health officials are racing to vaccinate children for polio in war-torn Gaza after a case was reported there. And we have a warm and sunny day today. We'll have what to expect with Chris Warner in the Skywatch Weather Center. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. We'll be right back. High school softball is alive and well in southwest Missouri. Carl Junction began its 2024 season with three wins and one loss at the Hound Dog Classic in Aurora over the weekend. Yesterday, the Lady Bulldogs played their first home game of the year. Carl Junction playing that 2024 home opener against McDonald County. But CJ starting pitcher Kylie Spencer starts strong. She's going to get a swinging strikeout in the first. And then catches a batter looking in the second. But that inning, the Mustangs break through. The bases are loaded. Peyton Allenbaugh hits one to the gap in right center. That's a two-run double. Matt County takes a 2-0 lead. Next batter, Kirsten Hopkins hits a grounder to first. She's out, but Vanessa Zamora hustles in from third. That's an RBI ground out. 
Mustang starting pitcher Dakota O'Brien was excellent in the circle. She gets a swinging strikeout in the bottom of the second. She goes the distance, pitching seven scoreless innings. Dog County wins it. Final score, seven to nothing. Pittsburgh State football impressed the entire country with its 19-3 victory over third-ranked Ferris State on Saturday night. The Gorillas are the first Division II team other than Grand Valley State to beat the Bulldogs since 2019. A few Gorillas get some recognition after their performance on Saturday. Starting with Austin Schmidt, the PSU place kicker converted on four field goals in the win over the Bulldogs, which tied a school record. He's named the MIAA Specialist of the Week as well as the Special Teams National Player of the Week by D2Football.com. Schmidt isn't the only Gorilla to receive recognition from the MIAA. Gorilla linebacker Thomas Cook is named Co-Defensive Player of the Week. This comes after he accumulated five tackles, a sack, a forced fumble, and a fumble recovery in that win over the Bulldogs and helped limit Ferris to 171 total yards of offense. Still to come, new research suggests donating a kidney is safer than doctors have long thought. Plus, get another check of that forecast when we come back. Welcome back to the KOM Morning News 516 now on this Wednesday morning. We're starting with a live look from our camera downtown Pittsburgh. We're looking pretty good this morning. Just a couple of clouds out there so far, but those will eventually move on out. Our camera 7th and range line also looking pretty good as well. We'll take a look at the MoDOT camera 20th and range line for a moment. And we have got uh, clear streets. We've got mostly clear skies. We've got dry conditions out there as well. And same from the KDOT camera 69 and Kansas Crossing just south of Pittsburgh. Let's take a look at the future track and at least through today, there's really not much to show. There's a few clouds out there this morning. Can't really see them. It's kind of dark, but assure, I can assure you they are there. They will be gone though, and then we will have sunny skies out there. And with all that sunshine and no cloud cover, we're going to get a little warmer today. Now, as I mentioned earlier, it's going to be seasonably warm about where we should be, but it's going to feel a lot hotter than what it has been the last couple of days as we've been pretty cool, pretty comfortable out there. As we head into our Thursday, though, that's when we're going to have an opportunity for an isolated pop up shower or thunderstorm out there. And the future track has added a few since it's earlier runs, but again, most of us will remain dry and we're going to see that same pattern repeat for us on our Friday with some brief opportunities for an isolated pop up shower or thunderstorm by Friday afternoon across the area. And but again, most of us will remain dry out there and again, a bit warmer. However, right now it's a bit cooler. 59 in Joplin East breeze at about five miles an hour around the region. And we mentioned this yesterday. It was a possibility and it certainly happened. There are a lot more upper 50s across the region as we get our Wednesday underway. So we've got the upper 50s and then some low to mid 60s. Not a bad start to the day, especially again. Technically, we're still in summer until the 22nd of this month, so it's not bad out there. Sunny skies through the morning, a cool start, but with that sunshine, we will warm up rather quickly and we'll go upper 70s by 11 o'clock this morning. As we end the afternoon, a very straightforward day for us. Clear skies, plentiful sunshine, and again, upper 80s out there. Average highs about 87, 88. That's about where we're going to be today. Maybe a degree higher, maybe a degree lower, but right in that range. So, like I said, it's going to feel hotter to us because it's been so cool the last couple of days, but it's going to be right where it should be. Clear skies through the evening, low 70s by 10 o'clock and eventually falling back into the low to mid 60s for our overnight lows. As I mentioned, though, we're going to cool back again. Then we're going to really start to heat up. Still looking at that next week. So again, isolated storms Thursday, Friday. We'll go upper 80s tomorrow, pushing close to 90 on our Thursday. And we'll go low to mid 80s Friday. Take a look at these lows heading into the weekend. Low to mid 50s, some upper 50s out there. And look at the highs Saturday and Sunday. We're looking at upper 70s and low 80s, but it is short lived. It will start to heat up. Isolated showers possible next Monday and Thursday. And then, as I mentioned, we start to go well above normal by the second half of next week, seeing the return of the low to mid 90s across the area. That's a check of your forecast. We will be back with Health Watch right after this. Topping Health Watch this morning. Most of the world's population is not getting the nutrients they need to sustain rather a healthy diet. Calcium, iron and vitamin C and E are essential to health, but most people likely are not getting enough nutrient rich foods. Researchers looked in dietary data to find what micronutrients 
are consumed and globally 65 to 67 percent of the world's population isn't getting enough vitamin E, calcium and iron in their foods. North America, Europe and Central Asia were considerably low in calcium level intake. Also, some women's diets showed lower levels of nutrients like iodine, B12 and iron compared to men who struggled to consume zinc, magnesium and vitamin A. A lack of nutrients can lead to fatigue, bone pain, hair loss and weakness. The findings are published in the Lancet Global Health. Well, a groundbreaking study says a new blood test may be able to predict heart disease 30 years in advance. Doctors are referring to the test as three pronged and it would include the current LDL cholesterol testing to determine whether a person may be vulnerable to heart issues. It also calls for testing for two more biomarkers CRP a protein produced by the liver that increases a response to inflammation and lipoprotein, a kind of fat in the body. Researchers say taken together, the three tests can predict cardiovascular events that could occur even three decades from now. The research was published on Saturday in the New England Journal of Medicine. Well, new research finds people who donate a kidney face a lower risk of death than what has been previously believed. A study done over the course of 30 years found that less than one out of 10,000 kidney donors died within three months of them undergoing surgery. That's different from previous older data that transplant centers use that shows there are three deaths out of every 10,000 donors. Now, according to health experts, new surgical techniques are making the operating room safer for donors. The new data could ease concerns for would be kidney donors, especially with such a big need for them. There's almost 90,000 people in the US on the kidney transplant waiting list. The research was published in the JAMA, the Journal of the American Medical Association. Well, despite some recent improvements, mental health challenges continue to weigh heavily on teenagers since the COVID-19 pandemic, with young girls being particularly affected. Julia Vargas Jones is sharing the story of how the second largest school district is stepping up to address this ongoing crisis. Hi, welcome. If you could please take off your shoes. No shoes, no phones, and no desks. Instead, this classroom has Tibetan singing bowls, salt lamps, and floor pillows. My name is Myra Villa, and I'm one of the psychiatric social workers of, of the school. And basically, my job here is crisis intervention. Breathe in. Hold it. Breathe out. Here, high schoolers also learn to identify anxiety and depression and what to do about it in a judgment-free space. This as teens nationwide continue to struggle with their mental health in the wake of the pandemic. According to the CDC's latest youth risk behavior survey, 40 percent of high school students surveyed report feeling persistently sad or hopeless in 2023. That's down slightly from 42 percent in 2021, but still about 10 percentage points higher than it was in 2013. For teen girls, the issue is even more pronounced. 53% say they felt persistently sad or hopeless, compared to 28% of boys. Among all teens, 20% say they seriously consider suicide, up from 17% in 2013. They were feeling scared. They were not feeling well. They were feeling uh, depressed, anxious. We made decisions, tough decisions, that prioritized the protection, the safety, the well-being of kids. In fact, our strategic plan elevates joy as one of its priorities. To support students, the Los Angeles Unified School District has brought in more than 800 mental health professionals to work with its roughly 430,000 students. We never learn how to just take a moment to, you know, think about things, um, meditate, things that could help us to just take a pause. That skill, students say, is already helping them cope with the stresses of academic performance. I never really get the chance at school to like kind of like fully relax myself and I think this is a perfect place to kind of do it. Julia Vargas Jones, Los Angeles.
That's a look at some of today's top health stories. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. Now we've got a pretty chilly start to the day out there. We're looking at sunny skies and warmer temperatures today, even though it's a little cooler this morning. We'll have another look at your forecast when the KOAM Morning News returns. Right now at 530, aspiring artists in Carthage now have an after school art class to show off their skills. And we've got just a couple of clouds out there this morning. Those will soon be gone. A warm and sunny day ahead of us. A look at that forecast gets you out the door coming up. Plus, a business in southeast Kansas uses grant money to help put local farm food on the dinner table. The four states most watched news starts now. Well, good morning and welcome to the KOAM Morning News. It's just coming up on 530. I'm Elise Snowy. And I'm Chris Warner. It's Wednesday, it's September, and it is the fourth day of Yes, here September. we are. We're already four days into the month, and oh. I, it still feels like August just ended. I mean, I know it did, right, but I mean, yes. like, it feels like it ended, <laughs> like, yesterday, okay? Oh, I know. I, I know that it did just end. I, I, I got three hours of sleep last night. I could not sleep. I kept waking oh, up. No, I'm Chris. waking up. So if I fall asleep during right. the middle of the weather or just here at the desk, yes. just to, you know, have somebody throw something sure. at me. You got it. That'll no be problem. the way to keep things going. And I'm going to keep you going with a look outside at our camera downtown Pittsburgh. We are looking pretty good so far this morning Now on the drive in. It's where I saw a couple of clouds. A little hard to see from the cameras because it's still dark out there, but uh, I can assure you that they are. There are a couple of them out there, but they will soon be gone. Our camera 7th and range line looking pretty good as well. Same from the MODOC camera 20th and range line as we get this Wednesday underway. Future track has nothing to show us as we head into the afternoon. We've got clear skies, a light easterly breeze, not an easter breeze, an easterly breeze, and warmer temperatures. So that's the interesting thing. That's what I love about this uh, job. Sometimes this is one of the coolest starts we've had across the region, yet it's going to be one of the warmer days this week, excluding Sunday 59 in Joplin 57 in Pittsburgh. And this is what I mean. Take a look at all these 50 degree readings out there. Look at Stockton now down to 53 this morning. This is almost October weather as we get this Wednesday underway. And again, though, it'll be warmer today than it was what it was the last couple of days. Upper 50s, low 60s, kids getting on the bus this morning. Sunny skies, east breeze 5 to 10. Sunny when they come home. There's those warmer temperatures, about 86 this afternoon. We are looking at highs about average. It's going to feel warmer for sure. We're going to know it's warmer out there, but it's not going to be incredibly hot. We're going to be right about where we should be for our highs. Sunny skies, mid to upper 80s. We're going to see some slight rain chances over the next couple of days. It's going to get really darn chilly heading into the weekend, and then it's going to get really darn hot after that. We'll go over all those details in that roller coaster ride here in just a few more minutes, Elise. All right, thanks, Chris. Okay, well, Dodd wants to remind drivers about some safety tips when sharing the road with semi trucks. And when passing, make sure you pass with care as these vehicles need more space to maneuver and try to avoid a semi's blind spawn as they are bigger as well. And Mo Dodd wants to warn some drivers in Joplin about some traffic delays this coming week. Today and Thursday, Main Street and 34th Street can expect some delays due to lane reductions. Drivers should plan for alternative routes in between the hours of 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. on both evenings while crews install a section of storm pipe. Well, Art Central Carthage kicks off a new after school program for aspiring artists. The Art After School program provides a once a week opportunity for young artists to develop diverse artistic interests, hone existing skills and be a part of a team, all while exploring various art forms. One educator says the class can also provide a great form of therapy. Well, we just don't do after school for kids. I mean, we do homeschool. We do um, we have a homeschool elementary in the morning, a homeschool junior high, high school in the afternoons. And then we also have, we're getting ready to start our free art. So anybody retired or somebody who just self-employed needs a break from their house for a moment, want to come here and do a little bit of art. It's kind of bring your own supplies and there'll be an instructor here to guide. The class will be offered every Tuesday after school at a cost of $10 per student. Parents are encouraged to register their kids early since space is limited. 
Well, the Kitchen Collective and Collaborative in Fort Scott plans to buy equipment for their commercial kitchen thanks to a grant. Farmers will be able to rent their licensed commercial kitchen to create products out of their produce. The idea is to bring the community more healthy, locally grown food options. Co-owner Rachel French says Bourbon County has a scarcity of local grown food and makes the kitchen, which makes the kitchen rather especially beneficial. Producers can bring their items here that they've grown and then they can turn them into value added products that helps the shelf life of their particular product and also gets it to um, an audience quicker that they didn't necessarily have that connection with. This grant was given through the Resilient Food Systems Infrastructure Program to strengthen food supply chains in Kansas. And that's a look at our top news stories coming up this half hour on the KOAM Morning News. Colombians were forced to walk to work after truckers block highways to protest fuel prices. Plus, Ukraine is recovering from one of the deadliest Russian airstrikes since the start of the war. We'll have the latest. You're watching the KOAM Morning News. Topping World Watch. Health officials are racing to vaccinate children for polio in war-torn Gaza after a case was reported there. Working through challenging conditions, they're hoping to reach more than 600,000 children over the next week or so. Connor Hansen has more from New York. Almost a year into the war in Gaza, health agencies are working together to vaccinate almost all of the region's young children for polio. To stop this transmission and to stop the suffering from people of this preventable cause, we have to vaccinate 90% of the people less than 10 years old. Gaza recently reported its first case in 25 years. A 10-month-old boy is now paralyzed in one leg. Two days into its mission, the World Health Organization says it has already vaccinated more than a quarter of its goal, trying to reach 640,000 children. Health officials say they have been working with Israel to deliver the vaccines during breaks in the fighting. More than 500 teams of health workers are part of the campaign. These children who have been, some of them have been, were born since 7th of October, who were born under the bombs, right? Who were born under rockets. Reaching all of the children won't be easy, with many roads and hospitals destroyed. The World Health Organization says it's another reason they need a ceasefire soon. I think to to make a real movement, a real progress on, on all of that, you need, of course, a ceasefire and you need to have a start in, in, in proper peace process and moving forward so that we can do this also in a different way. The immunization campaign started in central Gaza, but will be branching out to more war-torn regions to the north and south. Pope Francis had a warm welcome in Indonesia as he met with orphaned children and refugees in the country's capital. It's all part of the Pope's Asia-Pacific tour, the longest trip for the pontiff. Pope Francis is meeting with Indonesian clergy as they look to grow the Catholic Church within the region. Indonesia is home to the world's largest Muslim population, but Francis also hopes to celebrate harmony between Christians and Muslims within the country. The elderly and homeless also greeted the Pope through a Catholic Social Service Association. Well, thousands of Colombians forced to walk to work yesterday as a trucker strike blocks highways across the country. In Magoda, truckers blocking roadways in protest of a recent increase in the price of diesel fuel. Truckers unions have said that government plans to eliminate diesel fuel subsidies would force their businesses into bankruptcy. The government raised the price of diesel fuel by 50 cents over the weekend. A gallon in Colombia now costs $2.90. Well, a deadly airstrike on Ukraine could be part of Putin's revenge for Ukraine's offensive into Russian territory. Greg Palkett has more from London. Ukraine is reeling from one of the deadliest Russian airstrikes since the start of the war. Two ballistic missiles hitting a military training facility and a hospital in the city of Poltava, killing dozens and wounding hundreds more. 
Every day there are shellings, missiles. They don't let us live and work in peace. The missiles hit shortly after the city's air raid alert system was activated, giving civilians little time to head to bunkers and shelters. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky says the, quote, barbaric nature of the attack underscores the need for the West to provide more defensive weapons. The Russian scum will be held accountable for this strike, and once again, we urge everyone in the world who has the power to stop this terror. Air defense systems are needed in Ukraine. At the same time, Zelensky is also asking for offensive weapons and permission to use them on Russian soil as his troops move further into Kursk. The Ukrainians have captured more than 500 square miles of Russian territory so far, though it hasn't stopped Moscow from pressing ahead with its own offensive in eastern Ukraine. Russian President Vladimir Putin now sending in fresh reserves to help fight back against the incursion, hoping to end the first occupation of Russian territory since World War II. Our armed forces will do everything to ensure that normal life in these regions is restored. There can be no doubt about this. Putin ordered his forces to push the Ukraine Ukrainians back across the border by October 1st. But he didn't say what he'll do if that doesn't happen. And that's a look at World Watch. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the KOM Morning News 544 now on this Wednesday morning and we're starting with the future track and the future track is as clear as our day is going to be today. We're going to have no clouds, ample sunshine out there. Now, even though we've got a fairly cool start to the day, we're actually going to be warmer today than where we were yesterday and uh, Monday across the region because we're going to have plentiful sunshine. No, not a lot of clouds hanging around today. So even though it's going to be hotter today, it's going to be seasonably hot. We're talking mid upper 80s out there. So sitting about right where we should be. We'll have clear skies as we head into the overnight hours. So we'll again fall back into the 60s for most of us, maybe a couple of upper 50s. Then on our Thursday, we have an opportunity for some isolated to widely scattered pop up showers and thunderstorms once we get into the heating of the day. And as you can see, Thursday, we're going to be a little warmer for some of us. We're looking a little further up on the upper 80s to right around 90 degrees out there. These storms will be fairly isolated and short lived, but some of us may get at least a little rainfall. We need a lot more to make up for what we are behind in, but uh, we'll take whatever we can get at this point. By Friday, it's going to be a similar situation, mainly on the Missouri side is where it's looking to be right now uh, for an opportunity for an isolated pop up shower or thunderstorm by late morning and early afternoon. And then we're going to have those uh, mostly clear skies, a few clouds in our far western counties, and that's really about it on our Friday as well. However, that's going to start to set off. You see how the winds are shifting out of the north. It's going to get considerably cooler heading into the weekend, at least briefly. Pretty cool this morning, though. 59 in Joplin. East breeze is about five miles an hour and temperatures across the area. Number of 50 degree readings stocked in the cool spot spot rather at 53 degrees. We've otherwise got upper 50s and low to mid 60s across the area. So a very nice start to the day. And even though this is one of our cooler starts this week, it's going to be again one of our warmer days, excluding Sunday. Sunday got pretty darn toasty, but we won't go back in time to that one. Sunny skies through the morning again, cool initially, but with all that sunshine, we warm up pretty quickly. Upper 70s pushing close to 80 by 11 o'clock this morning, heading into the afternoon. Ample sunshine temperatures again, mid upper 80s out there, and we'll have that east breeze at about five to 10 miles an hour. Clear skies will persist through the evening and into the overnight hours, so we'll eventually fall back into the low 70s uh, by I apologize. I was trying to stop it. I couldn't stop it. I'm sorry. A low to mid 60s for our overnight lows. That happens more and more to me the, the longer I do this. And, you know, the first time it happened, I was like, it'll never happen again. It keeps happening. All right, upper 80s, close to 90 for our Thursday. Low to mid 80s on Friday, and then check out the lows Friday, Saturday, Sunday into the 50s. High Saturday and Sunday, we're looking at upper 70s and low 80s. But then as we head into the next work week, things really start to heat back up. Near normal by Tuesday, isolated shower chances Monday and Thursday and temperatures going back to very summer like conditions well above normal low to mid 90s in the second half of next week. That's check your forecast. We'll be back with more of the KOM morning news right after this. Well, summer movie season may be over, but Hollywood has four big flicks lined up to keep you coming back to theaters in September. Rick Damagella reports. When I was a teenager, 
a trickster demon terrorized our entire family and tried to force me to marry him. It's been 36 years since the original Beetlejuice. Michael Keaton brings the character back to the big screen in Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Tim Burton returns to the director's chair with Jenna Ortega joining original cast members Winona Ryder and Catherine O'Hara in the sequel. The juice is loose in theaters once again September 6th. How did you end up here? Work. What do you do? Retirement planning. Dave Bautista is an assassin who falls in love with a dancer played by Sofia Butella in the romantic action flick The Killer's Game. Terry Crews, Pom Clementif, and Sir Ben Kingsley co-star when the contract goes live September 13th. So, how long do you think we'll be here? I'm not talking to you. Before they were enemies, Optimus Prime and Megatron were allies. Chris Hemsworth and Brian Tyree Henry voiced the duo in the animated adventure Transformers 1. The robots in disguise invade theaters September 20th. Processing language. We need to learn how things work on this island. Another animated robot tale arrives a week later in DreamWorks' The Wild Robot, based on the children's book series by Peter Brown, with Lupita Nyong'o voicing Roz the Wayward Automaton. The Wild Robot arrives in theaters September 27th. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. Well, the awesome power of Mother Nature is on terrifying display in a surveillance video shared by a Northeast library decimated by a wall of flood water that came crashing through the building. Jeremy Roth has today's Take a Look at This. This is all that's left of a New York library's basement that was no match for a powerful and destructive wall of water brought on by historic flooding in the Northeast. Surveillance video from inside the Smithtown Library on Long Island shows water began seeping in from under a door, but you soon realize the writing was on the wall if you watch the wall on the left, which eventually bows and then buckles, giving way to an intense tidal wave of flood water. Another angle shows the water surging into the library's media center, collecting books, electronics, and furniture in its wake. Then, just as forcefully as it made its entrance, it makes its exit, bursting through an exterior door on the other side of the building. All told, the torrent left some $10 million in damage, including to some historical documents, like a letter signed by Thomas Jefferson. Despite the flood's effect on items they consider priceless, officials say they're confident they'll be able to save much of the collection. From a battering ram of water to a battering ram in the water. That's what archaeologists say they found in the Mediterranean Sea just off the coast of Sicily. It's a bronze battering ram they believe once adorned the bow of an ancient warship, likely similar to the one pictured here. Researchers say the area was once the site of a massive naval battle between ancient powers Rome and Carthage around the year 241 BC. Now, for the first time in roughly 2300 years, the ram is once again seeing the light of day. Since the early 2000s, at least 25 similar rams have been found in the stretch of sea, solidified it as a hotbed of history hunting activity. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. Stick around, we'll be right back. Well, trying pumpkin spice products could be your new job. Personal finance company Finance Buzz is hiring a pumpkin spice pundit to test out new fall themed Trader Joe's products. The pumpkin spice expert will test more than 20 pumpkin flavored food and drinks to help consumers make more informed decisions when purchasing new grocery items. Applicants need to be at least 18 years old with a great sense of taste and a strong interest in pumpkin season. The pay is $1,000 for completing the taste test and a $500 Trader Joe's gift card to cover the food costs. Finance Buzz is taking applications until September 10th. And get ready to go nuts today. It's National Macadamia Nut Day. Mark the day by trying a new recipe involving macadamia nuts. Bake them into a, excuse me, a batch of cookies or try some on your salad. You can add macadamia creamer or syrup in your coffee or just have a handful of the nuts for a snack. Here's a fun fact. Macadamia nut trees were discovered in Australian rainforest about a thousand years ago. I've got those uh, white chocolate chip macadamia cookie too. Those are pretty darn good. So if you don't, you know, uh, if, if that's the way you want to go, that's the way I would go to celebrate macadamia nut day.
There's a day for everything and there's a day for some pretty nice weather and today's going to be that day, but it will be a bit warmer out there. Sunny skies are going to go upper 70s by 11 o'clock this morning and as we head into the afternoon, we hold on to those clear skies and because we have more sunshine, we're going to be a bit warmer. We're going to be hotter, but we're going to be seasonably hot as we go into the upper 80s across the area today. We'll hold on to clear skies through the evening, and those will continue into our overnight as well. Then the low 70s by 10 overnight lows tonight, low to mid 60s and a couple of upper 50 degree readings will still be possible. Then it's going to go on the roller coaster again. After warming up Sunday, we cooled off. We're warming back up closer to 90 tomorrow, so a little above normal. Isolated shower and storm chances Thursday and Friday. Then we cool back down. Look at these lows into the low 50s Friday and Saturday, upper 50s Sunday night, low 80s, maybe even some upper 70s this weekend. So a great weekend. A few showers Monday and Thursday and we see uncomfortable summer heat return by the second half of next week. So we go to the low to mid 90s. Let's check your forecast. We are back with more right after this.